at Rapid 2023, new materials are in evidence everywhere. And materials are really important, not just from a performance and cost standpoint, but because additive is a different way of making parts. I'm with Raymond Weitekamp, he's CEO of Polyspectra. Raymond, it's tell me, what are the difficulties in specifying or even creating a material specifically for the additive manufacturing process? Uh, well, there's a lot and you have to think about the print speed, the, uh, the cost of the resin. Uh, the thing that we're really focused on is the performance, the durability. Uh, and so we focused all of our products, uh, which is a new category of resins called cyclic olefin resins, uh, on accessing something that nobody else can do, which is really high toughness and really high working temperature at the same time. We feel like that combo is necessary to take 3D printing into true additive manufacturing and making parts that can safely displace injection molding. Now when you say high temperature, what kind of temperatures are we talking about? Uh, so uh, Core Alpha, which is the first product that we have, has a glass transition temperature around 165C. So depending on your use case, if it's loaded, you probably want to stay below 130. Unloaded, we have customers taking parts up to 200C, uh, depending on the application. Uh, and then today, we're really excited to announce Core Bio, uh, which is our first resin uh, in the healthcare, medical devices, and consumer space. Uh, there, the glass transition temperature is only 135C, uh, but that's hot enough to uh, survive a steam autoclave. And so here we're boiling uh, a bunch of parts in a, in a tea kettle as an example of showing uh, what that high working temperature can do. And just for context, that, that steam is what sterilizes the parts to make them safe for medical device applications. Do you expect the, the dental market a primary user for this? Yeah, dental is a really big one for us. Uh, we've been working behind the scenes in dental for about five years now, and Core Bio is integrating a lot of the learnings that we've made along the way and is our first product that is more uh, openly and publicly facing in these healthcare medical device applications. So here, just as a simple example, is, is a surgical guide uh, with really high impact strength. So you know, the surgeon is going to come in and drill right here and you want to make sure that they don't bump any teeth or, or uh, drill where they're not supposed to. Outside of medical applications, are there other applications where you think this sort of temperature resistance and, and toughness are necessary? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, automotive, which I know is close to your heart, is one that, that we're working on closely. Obviously in auto, everybody loves black, so core black tends to be the most popular in automotive applications. Uh, we're also doing a lot of rapid tooling uh, where we're actually printing the mold insert uh, for injection molding. So that one's sort of uh, ironic in that why I started the company was to displace injection molding, but then a lot of our customers said, wait, those properties would be amazing for injection molding. I want to use this for injection molding. So we, we love that uh, and uh, we're sort of humbled by our customers telling us that, that that's what they wanted. Yeah, uh, uh, many many industry insiders think that tooling actually is the great opportunity in additive manufacturing, which is ironic because you think it is replacing fixturing and and work holding, but in fact, there's a huge market in fixturing and work holding, isn't there? No, absolutely. And for for many applications, automotive included, uh, it it really is just more practical way of integrating additive into the workflow because maybe you've spent 30 years specking some very specific you know, glass-filled PBT into your automotive thing and you don't want to spend $5 million recreating those design allowables, but you do want to uh, produce parts locally, domestically, you do want to uh, innovate more quickly. And so their printed tooling actually is a really, uh, really important application. And actually just earlier, like 30 minutes ago, Ellen Lee from Ford was on stage saying that the biggest use case of uh, 3D printing on her team at Ford is actually they're printing parts for the automotive line. So they're not printing the parts for the cars yet, or at least the higher volume production vehicles, but every single day they're using 3D printing to make you know, end effectors and tooling and uh, other kinds of jigs and fixtures for the manufacturing assembly line. So I, th I think it is just a nuts and bolts, more practical use case short term. Now traditionally, um, engineering resins were expensive. Uh, commodity resins are very cheap. And in that gray area in between where you need a low cost material because you're making a lot of parts, but you also need some strength, some ductility, some toughness, traditional way might be a commodity resin and then we fill it. 
So we're going to throw carbon black in there or glass roving or something in there to, tr to try and create effectively, you know, a composite. Yeah, yeah, yeah with a, 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 a thermoplastic matrix. Is, is this a different way of thinking about this now? Is this a matter of basically we can get a neat material which will give me that kind of composite properties? Yeah, absolutely. So you're right. And the you can only uh, fill crap <laughs> so much to get your way out of the bad properties. Excuse my language. So you can push the, the uh, heat deflection temperature pretty high on a brittle resin by loading it with nanoparticles, ceramics, uh, other things. The approach that we've taken at Polyspectra is we've actually completely reinvented the resin chemistry. So the molecules in our resin aren't in anybody else's resin. It's a completely different chemical mechanism. It's based on a reaction called olefin metathesis and a catalyst that my PhD advisor Bob Grubbs won the Nobel Prize for in 2005. So our uh, while the printer looks the same as any other DLP style printer from the outside, chemically what's happening on the inside is completely different than any other photopolymer resin product. And so our base resin can surpass most people's highly filled, highly engineered uh, resin system by virtue of not having any of the same starting monomers in there and we're making completely different networks that have these very unique thermomechanical properties. Will this uh, will this use this photopolymer? Will this make a, a sort of a liquid or a, or a photo-based application competitive with powder bed? I think it can. Uh, right now, on a pound-for-pound -pound basis, uh, we're going to be a little bit more expensive uh, than that. Where we can really outperform the powder bed methods, whichever brand is your favorite, is on the, the surface finish and accuracy, which is actually quite relevant to core bio. So one of the problems with SLS or MJF or powder bed is the surface texture, it harbors microbes and, in, and can be a cause for, um, you know, biofilm growth. Uh, and so the, not only do we have really nice resolution, but we have no moisture absorption in this material either. And so it's very bio-inert, uh, uh, hence kind of the, the core bio is about being more about not reacting with biology than reacting with biology. Novel, neat polymer chemistry to create composite-like properties out of a neat polymer, says Raymond Reitekamp, CEO of Polyspectra. At Rapid TCT 2023, the air was electric. The excitement about Manufacturing America is palpable. New technologies, new ways of implementing additive manufacturing, not just for prototyping, but as a true production process, were all over this show floor. The future looks very bright for Manufacturing America based on what we have seen here. Thanks for joining us on the show floor. See you next time. Today's episode is brought to you by Engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on Engineering.com TV today.